Sebastian and myself, we will present you the polymath. So this is the mathematical library. And uh, we will talk about the current version of polymath, so how it has mm, changed from the version one that was presented before, and how we see the future of this library. Uh, sorry, uh, yes. uh, actually, the, the main author of this library is Serge uh, Stinwich, but yes. he couldn't come here because, well, because of problems. So we are going to present this uh, in, a, in the name of him. So yes. Yes, in fact, I, I will mention this a bit later, but indeed, so Sebastian and me, we are not the main developers of Polymath. We are just the small, humble contributors, but we are the best you get at this conference because yeah. the, <laughs> yes. <laughs> The smarter guys, unfortunately, could not come, so we'll do with what we have. So uh, in a nutshell, Polymath is the library for scientific computing, or simply it's a mathematical library in Faro. It provides different algorithms for uh, mathematics, statistics, uh, probabilities, data analysis, and it is often used by other libraries, such as the library that we developed, the Faro AI library. So that's why we often contribute to Polymath. So uh, as many of you remember, in 2019 in Cologne, uh, Serge, he presented Polymath version one. And uh, a lot of time has passed since then, so unfortunately this is the, uh, only three years later we can meet. And uh, now here in uh, Serbia, in this beautiful city, we will present you the, we will try to remind you what is Polymath, we will try to show you what it does, and uh, we will discuss some steps, what lies ahead of us, so what are the, uh, next steps that we want to take to develop this polymath. And we'll, we will also tell you how you can support us in this work. So how can you help us? So uh, first, what is polymath? Uh, first, a disclaimer. Uh, this is something that Serge does in every presentation he makes. And we would like to continue this tradition. None of us are mathematicians. So we are just computer scientists who love math. We love Greek. And we want to develop these algorithms from a computer science and algorithmic point of view, but we're not at all experts in mathematics. So these are the main contributors of Polymath from version one till now. So before there were also much more contributors, but they do not fit on this slide. So as you can see, the main guys there, these are Serge and Emil, and they do really 90% of all the contributions, 90% of all the work. And then myself, the Ivan, uh, Sebas, Ernan, Rakshit, and all these other nice people. Uh, from time to time, we also help uh, Sergeant Amal contribute this beautiful library. So uh, these are some algorithms that exist inside Polymath. So you can see that there are, uh, for example, matrix vector uh, algebra, there are complex numbers, polynomials, uh, dimensionality reduction, which we will show to you in the example. Uh, there is also data frame, which is kind of a separate project, but it exists under the umbrella of Polymath. There are probability distribution, matrix decompositions, uh, different algorithms such as Kolmogorov, Smirnol, uh, numerical optimization, quaternions, statistics, and many, many other stuff. So uh, a lot of people over the years have contributed many small and big algorithms to Polymath, and now we have a lot of beautiful and really cool stuff. So uh, even though for many of you, perhaps polymath may seem something like something complicated and difficult because there are so many different algorithms that you may not have heard about, but it is super easy to start. So you can just uh, load it like this. And then after that, you can, for example, use these two data structures. So uh, polymath is basically based on uh, vector, which is the mathematical data structure like an array, but that can uh, perform certain mathematical operations and the matrix. So like this, you can create these two data structures. And after that, you can manipulate them, you can multiply them, you can, for example, transpose the matrix, invert the matrix, find the uh, pseudo inverse, you can, for example, multiply matrix vector, and there's a lot, a lot that you can do. Uh, here is the example of dimensionality reduction, so I will pass this to Sebastian. Okay, as you may, may remember from yesterday's presentation, I think, uh, we, I talk a little bit of this dimensionality reduction, and actually, we, for do that, we do this in Faro AI, but we, actually, we use Polymath for this. So in simple words, actually, uh, dimensionality reduction is to reduce the dimension of a data set. For example, here, we can see that we have a 3D uh, data set, or 3D data, uh, 
and mean by three dimensions, and it can be something difficult to visualize. But for example, in the mathematical world, as you may, may know, there is like uh, infinite dimensions. We can have 10, 15, 20. So there is like a lot of uh, cases in which we want or we need to de reduce the dimension of the data. So in these cases where uh, uh, PCA, like a, a principal component analysis algorithm, uh, goes into work, because we actually the work, the, the main thing that does is that summarize all the dimensions of the data into the given dimensions that we do. In this example, we are reducing from three to from two dimensions. One thing that maybe it was not clear in the thing that I said yesterday is that we, this algorithm doesn't search for the two main features and give the return the two main features. Actually summarize all the features or all the dimensions of the data into the given dimensions that we want. Yes, so just a second. So in other words, these features that it produces, they don't exist. These are not features from the data set. It's like the combined feature that represents the most information from the data in the smallest possible space. And, uh, some applications of PCA uh, is, for example, in machine learning and statistics to, to solve the dimensionality curves, or for example, also to visualize data or to train or to reduce the complexity of data sets. For example, if we want to train a machine learning model that has like a, really a lot of features, it can take a lot of time. So this is also used uh, to reduce the complexity of the problem. One other application is the, to perform a linear mapping of data in lower dimensional space. Uh, like, yeah, so the lower dimension representation is maximized. This is also, for example, it can be to visualize the data or so on. For example, this, here you can see, what, like in the previous example, we have the 3D data, or we have two dimensions, and we summarize into one. So, well, this is a, a structure of the code, or how can we do this using polymath? At the end of the presentation, we are going to show a little bit in the, in the faro lively how to do it, but as, as you can see, the code, or like, is a pretty, the API, like, is pretty simple. We first, like, uh, we have data, you see the data variable, it's like an array of data. We need to create, a, we need to instantiate a matrix, a polymath matrix object, because polymath uh, un understands only, uh, well, works with polymath matrix and polymath vectors. We create the, the PCA algorithm, and then we choose to only have two, two dim dimensions. We fill the algorithm, and then we, we need to transform the data, and then we only take the, the two principal components that we got. So this is the only code that we need to, uh, to use this algorithm. And uh, for example, here we did a visualization of the, this is a, a data set of the, the transactions of the credit card card data set of the transactions of clients that they bought things with the credit card. It has like 20 or 30 dimensions. And we applied this code and we visualized like that. It's like, for example, to present it in companies, it has more sense to visualize the data mm -hmm. like that. Of course, this is a demo. This doesn't have like, not like a, some specific real sense, but it's only to show that we ma managed to visualize or to, uh, to graph a 30 dimension data into, well, into the, the 2D world. Yeah. We we often use this when we work on some AI algorithms. So we often use this when we have, for example, four, five, or 100 columns, and then we want to see certain pattern on the picture because you can only graph two or, or three dimensions. So like this, we use the PCA to stack it together and then show it on the picture. It's like the common application that we use. Uh, another thing that exists in the, uh, in the polymath, under the polymath umbrella is the data frame project. So it allows you to work with data that is in, uh, represented in a tabular way. So you have certain tables, uh, which can be, you can think of this as Excel inside a variable. So uh, we have this kind of object that represents the data and provides the very big API that allows you to manipulate this data. So you can access, for example, each column of the data, each row, uh, you can search through the data, you can uh, filter some rows and columns, uh, you can, for example, uh, find certain statistical information about, so what is the mean value, what is the standard deviation, then you can group by, so in this case, for example, you could, you see this is the iris data set, and then you could group by uh, the class of the flowers, so put all uh, Virginica flowers in one data frame, all the Setosa flowers in another data frame, and operations like that. So it's kind of like a database or an Excel sheet inside, a, inside an object. Uh, and here we see also that it's what Sebas already showed you in his previous presentation. This is the tool for inspecting data frame. It was uh, created by Hernan Morales. 
so now we have it. It's also super nice. It allows you to browse the data frames, uh, see different statistical moments here on the bottom. Well, it's not very visible there, but uh, if we zoom in, maybe like like this. Yes, so here you see the data and here you see the st uh, different statistics of each column. Yes, like that. And uh, there is also another window where you can see this kind of uh, visualizations. So uh, you can also visualize uh, how the data is distributed in each column and so on. And we plan to also extend this inspector to uh, give you more power, to give you more possibility to also manipulate data from inside. Uh, okay, the slide we don't have, sorry. <laughs> so uh, there is also the Polymath book. So this is a very nice thing. There was uh, a book written by Didier Basset. Uh, it was long, long time ago. And uh, it described Polymath and all of its different algorithms, but as they were back then. So since that time, Polymath has changed a lot. So now Serge is working on the new edition of this book and uh, hopefully it will come soon. So it will be super nice like that. Uh, we will have a very good documentation of all these algorithms, of all these techniques that exist in the polymath. Uh, now I will talk a little bit about the future. So uh, what are the things that we want to do? Uh, so here I did not, uh, yeah, I did not have time to put Sufjan's picture. I will make it a bit smaller so you can see it like that. Yes, so uh, first we would like to decouple the packages of polymath because right now we have many uh, strange dependencies. So for example, uh, we have algorithms depending on data structures, but we also have data structures depending on the algorithms, which makes it hard for us to separate. Ideally, in the next version of Polymath, we would really like that we can uh, load separately different parts of this project because it grew very big, so that you can, for example, use Polymath matrix without using uh, let's say complex numbers or without using uh, some statistical distributions. But right now it's not really possible because right now the packages are really coupled. So what we want to do, and we started already discussing with people who work with Moose, like Sufjan, like uh, Nicola, Anne, uh, we have discussed what are the different uh, techniques that exist in the Moose platform that could help us understand the source code of uh, Polymath to analyze it and to understand what is the best way to split those packages. Uh, so maybe with visualizations like that, maybe with certain uh, techniques like that, with certain metrics, we can understand, okay, where, where can we start? What is the point? What is the package that is most easy to separate? And then the next one, the next one. So like this, we can be guided in this process. And actually also, uh, we did a small experiment with Moose and, and like that is that we found like these strange dependencies because Moose is actually a super good for this use case. So like that, with this visualization and Moose tools, we actually found out all the things that Oleg said. Yes. So yeah, we are really, we want to work with, um, with Moose. We want to use Moose for like decoupling this. Yes. So this is one thing that lies ahead of us. Uh, another thing is uh, what Sebas already briefly explained in his previous presentation and what we will explain in detail in our next presentation tomorrow. It's uh, how we can make a polymath and far AI faster by delegating certain primitive operations to the low-level libraries implemented in Fortran or C. So we did some experiments and uh, by calling uh, certain functions from LOPAC, we can increase 2,000 times speed up. So we would like to continue these experiments and see maybe we can improve the speed of uh, polymath matrix or certain algorithms inside polymath and make them much faster and make them much more useful for big and uh, complex data sets. Another thing that we want to do is to have more integration with Faro AI and also with DataFrame. Because as you see in this picture that also we showed you before, uh, for example, in the uh, Python ecosystem of uh, machine learning and data analysis, uh, there is the structure that uh, you have machine learning library that depends on mathematical library that in turn depends on uh, some fast low level algebra library. And in Faro right now we don't have that. So each library is uh, kind of self-sufficient. So in Faro AI, we don't really uh, use polymath underneath, which just sometimes takes some part of polymath. And also polymath does not really depend on any low level uh, representation. And also polymath implements right now even some machine learning algorithms inside of it. So it's a bit, uh, we need to kind of divide these responsibilities and directly depend on uh, polymath and to structure this process a little bit. So uh, we will closely collaborate with uh, other members of the Polymath community that we can decide which packages, for example, we can migrate to Power AI and uh, which parts of Power AI can directly depend on Polymath. 
Uh, yes, another thing is the uh, documentation was micro down, so this was something presented to you already by Stefan. It's a very beautiful uh, new markup language that exists in Faro and uh, a very nice technique that allows you to write uh, those uh, comments in, uh, you know, now you can write class comments using mar markdown. And this is super nice because there is mass support. So now for polymath, you can write comments like that. You see, you can write uh, nice uh, Greek formulas that, uh, of course, everyone here likes, but we, we really like them. So uh, it's super cool. And also, for example, here is another case. You see, you can document your class, you can write some formulas, some code blocks that will have highlighting. So it's really cool to have uh, micro down support. And right now, uh, we tried it for some classes, but we really, what we want to do in the next year is to really rewrite a lot of documentation class comments for the entire polymath library. Yeah, because actually it will be super nice, for example, so for some user, like he's using polymath, he has like an idea of math, but not, not that much like us, for example, and we see an algorithm that we don't really remember, so we instantly have everything in the mm -hmm. class comments, so actually yeah, it's super nice this math support that we have now in Microdown. Yeah, without that it was really hard because sometimes we had to document certain things and we were trying to write in uh, English, you know, all these symbols, we were like sum this and that and that and it was very uh, hard to write. Uh, yeah, another thing is uh, raw cell uh, charting. So this is something that is not connected to polymath, but this is something that we would really like to have is the uh, more support for uh, specifically data charting and uh, mathematical charting in Rossell. And for that we also closely collaborate with Milton and uh, now Milton is building a very nice and very cool and also together with some interns at Inria. Uh, so Milton with them, they're building a super nice API for uh, charting and visualizing data. So soon we will be able to do charts like that with just a few lines of code. And uh, here's also another example of charting but the, that is more like a, uh, you know, a storytelling with data. So you can also add certain annotations, certain uh, explanations, certain labels. So uh, I don't know if you can get there, but hopefully with Russell and with Milton, we will, we will be there and we will be able to really uh, do a lot of cool math, a lot of cool analysis, and then visualize it in a very beautiful way. We, I mean, we can already do this, so it's important to say already with Rossell we can do all of these things, but now it's a bit hard, so for us we all, always have to come to Milton and say, oh, how do I do this plot, how do I do this plot? So I hope soon we will, not be, we will be able to do it ourselves, so just write some code and done. <laughs> and next thing is the notebook, so this is also something that we discussed uh, a week ago with Serge, and this is something that we would really like to have, but uh, we don't have it right now and maybe we will not have it soon. But in the future, it's really our dream uh, that we can have some kind of interactive environment for uh, communicating with data and for analyzing it in Faro. So uh, in uh, Python and in R, for example, there is this notion of uh, interactive notebooks where you can kind of write documentation. It's like a document that you write, but also it has code blocks that you can execute. So uh, as you write your document, you execute code blocks, you have results just underneath, and then you write this kind of, uh, you know, analysis documentation. So uh, there were already some attempts to do this in Faro. So for example, um, Jesus Maria, I, Jesus Maria. Yeah, yes, Jesus Maria. Uh, Sebastian pronounces is better, so. <laughs> I'm sorry. But uh, he uh, did a super nice uh, bridge so that now we can use, uh, we, we can use uh, Faro inside Jupiter. So we can add uh, Faro kernel there and then we can uh, execute Faro code blocks inside Jupiter. And here on this example, I don't know if it's visible, but it is already using polymath. So it executes some operations, it uses data frame, it visualizes it, super cool stuff. And rolls all over there. And uh, another thing, another option is we could do this also with the help of people from Fink because they also do the kind of uh, interactive experience where you can uh, communicate with data, you can interact in different blocks of code, blocks of uh, uh, visualizations and results. So I don't know where we will get from there, but it would be super nice that in future we have this kind of uh, interactive notebook experience in Faro that we could use for Polymath and for uh, Faro AI as well. Okay, now finally, uh, how can you help us? How can you support our work? The most important thing that we need is the contributions. So it is super nice because uh, we have a cool uh, issue tracker. We have a lot of issues that we create and very active people such as Hamal 
who always uh, create new issues, they uh, document them really well, and we have nice labels. So for example, if you're not sure that, uh, oh, can I do this, like uh, maybe you're a student, you would like to try something. So we have very nice labels that tell you, oh, this is an easy issue, this is easy issue for a beginner. And a lot of people like ML and Serge and ourselves who would be very happy to help you and communicate with you. And uh, fine. Yes. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, but for what? But all I said is super important because, for example, this last last month we had a lot of activity of Hema. Like, thank you, Hema, that he was doing like a really a lot, a lot of pull requests. But there were really no pe people to really review those pull requests. And now, like for example, we are busy. Also, search is busy. Yes. So like there are a pull requests that are, they are there. They are super nice, but there are we need people to review them. And to that is really a super important part. <laughs> To yes. Help. Like also, Marcus said in the, Faro, uh, the, the how to contribute to Faro yesterday presentation, this is also a problem that we, we have. Yes, indeed, I forgot to say this as well, so that we really also, we would be very grateful for code reviews. So if you can just go there, you see a lot of pull requests and you can uh, just try to review, just say, okay, this code is nice, it's not nice, I don't like the style. So very nice, very helpful. Uh, and finally, you can uh, sponsor the work of Polymath. So directly Search has created some uh, sponsoring page where you can, uh, there is a link and there is QR code where you can donate uh, a coffee for him or a glass of beer. So like this, uh, Serge should be more encouraged to write very beautiful code for Polymath. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And uh, now we are going to show a little demo of the po yes. uh, principal component analysis. Okay, uh, is it visible, the letters? Can you see it like, from behind? Oh, yes, okay. Uh, well, I will try to increase a lot the, maybe four. Mm, maybe if I open a new one. Okay, doesn't change too much. Well, I'm going, this is, I'm going to do it quickly. But as I, we show in the screenshot of previously, we are going to use a credit card data set. So for do that, we are going to load a data set that this is like a preload data set that we have that you can use uh, whatever data that you want. So I will execute this. It will take some seconds because it's a huge data set that we saw. Okay, so we can inspect it. So, okay, so as you can see, here is the data of the, of the credit card transaction. This is a, a data set of the transaction that you know the bank keeps track of you because they will want, like to spy people and whatever. So, so this is all the things that like, uh, this is like uh, the columns, for example, we can see column names, how self, uh, column names, size. So, okay, so they, it has 18 di dimensions. So we are going to do that and we are going to clean a little bit the data. So we are going to replace all these with zeros. We execute this, okay? So as you see here, here in the ID, we have a letter, so we want to remove the letter because we don't, we, the algorithm doesn't work with uh, strings. So in order to do that, we are going to apply a transformation to the data. That is, okay, to this column, we want to convert it as an integer. So, okay, we send the message as integer to all of the elements of this column. We execute this, okay, now we inspect, and we see uh, it's already as a string. We don't have a, any number. So we are, for, for doing this, we are using data frame, and data frame is also part of the polymath uh, ecosystem. So now, for speeding purposes, because else is going to take like three or four minutes, we are going to take randomly the first 1,000 elements to do it like quickly. Okay, now we have the data as an, in a form of uh, as an array of arrays of only numbers of 1,000 elements. And now we are going to create the polymath matrix with this data. So we execute this line of code. Okay, we inspect this. And as you can see, we have a matrix that has a, inside that has a collection of vectors. Um, uh, one thing that uh, we forgot to mention in the presentation is that actually Olex is starting to work into decoupling these concepts because as you see, we have two data structures. We have like a matrix and we have a vector. But in a mathematical point of view, they are not different. Actually, they can be the same object. So actually, that is also why we want to decouple the package, we, because we would like to have one common data structure that is also in all, in all the... Um, can, I, can I just add to that? Yeah, yeah, you come so, here uh, to the microphone. Oh, ah, yeah. Um, so the thing with the changing matrix and vector was that in Polymath, there are many, many uh, algorithms that depend on both, and they need to support both. So like this, there is a lot of code that is copied because you need to implement a method for a matrix and also the same method for a vector. And uh, I don't know actually what would be the good solution, so we're currently discussing this with uh, 
uh, Serge with Conrad. So uh, should we use only matrix for everything? So should we represent vector as matrix or maybe matrix as vector? Or maybe we can keep both of them. But uh, really something needs to be done there because there is a lot of code uh, duplication because of that. Okay, so we have already the matrix, uh, close the parentheses. Uh, we have the matrix already created. We are going to instantiate the principal component analysis algorithm, that is this class. We, so, so we create the instance of this, we inspect it. Okay, it's like an empty, well, not an empty object, but not a set object yet. So for, visual, for visualizing, we are going to choose only one dimension. Okay, so we say, okay, we want two dimensions and we want to fit the algorithm with the matrix. So now we are fitting the algorithm. This is going to take like some seconds. And, okay. Yeah, that's why also we keep 1,000 elements because else we, are, we don't want to be like a silent for, okay, so it's already there. Yeah, it's already fit. What it means is that uh, come, come here. It's, it's a kind of jargon that we use in uh, machine learning. It's when we take uh, the algorithm and the model that is trained on the data. So it's kind of training the algorithm on the data. It means that the algorithm has certain parameters and then first they're randomly initialized, but then it looks at the data and it feeds to this data. And it starts behaving in a way that it can uh, work on this data and represent certain patterns in this data. Okay, so it's already fit, and now we need to transform the, the comp because the algorithm will fit, but that either doesn't really transform the data. To do it that, we need to send the message transform with the matrix, and now this is going to return us the principal components that, that uh, the algorithm will summarize of the data. And as you can see, this is also a PM matrix with the 1,000 vector elements, so we're going to close this, and now we are going to obtain the components, the first and the second one, running this line and this line. Okay, now, as you can see, we have a vector of these elements and these other elements that are the summarized summarization of the principal components of the data set. Now we are going to run a, a, a Russell visualization only to show this. I, I am not going to explain this code because this is Russell, but I am only going to execute it. And okay, so like that. So we have this principal component visualization of, the, of this big uh, data set that has uh, well, 18, 18 dimensions, but as you can see, we can, we can, we can visualize it in two. Okay. Can you show this picture with uh, PMEs, with the colors, just for example? Because I would like to say something about that. Yeah. It's in the, um, in the video. I want to, we, we are going to show this. So we were using this big data set to demonstrate uh, how we can cluster it using the KVs algorithm, how we can find the clusters in the data. But because, uh, so the clustering was actually performed on the whole big data, you know, so all, all these many, many columns. But we could not visually understand it. So we got some clusters and we don't feel, oh, is it good, is it bad, does it make here. sense? And uh, because of this algorithm, now we can visualize it. Now we can look at it and uh, we can say, ah, oh, look, all the green parts are over there. All the brown is kind of in the bottom, pink is over there. So you get this visual understanding, right? And even, even though these uh, two components, of course, they cannot, uh, how many were there originally? It was 50 or? No, it was 18. 18, yes. So of course, two dimensions cannot perfectly represent all 18 dimensions, but this is mathematically the closest we can get, the closest projection. So that retains the most information. Yeah, and actually this application, this is the same data set and this is, for example, this can be used, and it is used actually in the real world. For example, as, as I said, this is a credit card a data set of the person, like the people that we bought things, like everybody of us. And we people run these kind of algorithms to cluster users. So the users that have this behavior in buying things, they belong to this group and the other group and the other group, and like that, they can do like targeting and they can do like a, a personalized a publicity and so on. So, yeah. So that, that is one of the applications, and we did this, like uh, the combination of principal component analysis with k-means. So that's the example of how we use polymath in our work. So there is questions? Okay, well, yep. thank okay. you. Thank you for your attention.